Hello guys and welcome back to another tutorial. Uh, today we're going to be updating the custom crops tutorial. I have basically redone it, uh, redesigned it all the way from scratch. So uh, we'll be covering that today and um, actually I implemented some new features uh, mainly for uh, increasing the seed drop based on the fortune tool that you have. So if you were to break the fully grown stage with say looting one, there's a chance that it will drop one to, um, I believe, what was it? Uh, five or no, four. I think up to four seeds, so one to four. If you were to do a uh, fortune two, then it has a chance to drop up to um, five seeds uh, from one or zero to one or zero to five uh, level one has zero to four and uh, level three has a chance to drop up to zero to six so uh, just like vanilla basically it has the same percentages and all that I've calculated it um, as best as I could so um, it should be close to the vanilla settings on that. Now, um, I am actually harvesting some um, corn flowers, but uh, the seeds are all set up, so if you right click on farmland, it won't be able to be placed anywhere else, as you can see here, not on any other block, so um, seeds have to be placed on farmland, and it's basically checking if there's error in that current space, or no block and then it can be placed down. Uh, there are eight stages for this particular um, workspace. Make things like uh, wheat or anything like that if you want to. Um, you can remove the um, stages if you want to as well. It won't really affect too much. You'll just have to adjust the code a little bit. I'll get into that a little bit later. And uh, yeah, outside of that, um, you can basically harvest it and stuff it when it's fully grown. It'll just drop one seed if it's not fully grown. And the other feature that it has is something vanilla does as well, I think. I'm not sure, I haven't tested it on vanilla. But if you drop um, any gravity type block, uh, even sand, on the crops itself. It just destroys the block that's being dropped on. So that's a new feature as well. And as you can see, it, it takes some time to grow up as well for the all the eight stages, but it has a chance to um, grow between uh, up to two stages at a time. So it could, like if this was stage one, uh, that just grew to stage uh, two. So this is stage one, that's stage zero, and that's stage, um, I believe that's stage two. So as you can see, it has a random interval depending on a random number. So uh, it does that every time it grows. I think that just jumped to stage uh, four. So um, yeah, let's look into the code and there's a little bit, but it should be easy to explain. Okay, so first things first, uh, let's look at the seed procedure uh, for seeds. What I have done is uh, basically made a right click event. Uh, it's basically just a regular item. There's no advanced stuff uh, going on here outside of just the seeds being able to be placed on um, farmland. So we're testing if the entity um, has uh, an item in its main hand and the item needs to be our seeds. I've left notes in all this so it's easy for you guys to set up if you needed to. Um, then what we're doing is we're also testing if the current block that's being right clicked on is farmland. If that's true, then it's testing that um, also if there is an air block one block above so to check to see if there's a space available and if that's true then it's going to run our event so uh, our right, right here we're basically removing the block above just to make sure that it runs properly and then what we're doing is we're placing our first stage of seeds 
and that's again one block above so it will place that and then over here what this is doing is if the player is not in creative mode then that means uh, spectator um, survival or adventure then what this is doing is it's going to remove one um, item from entity's main hand which again is our seeds so that means uh, we're removing one seed from the player's inventory so that's all that's going on with the seed procedure one of the major questions that I keep getting asked on um, my YouTube channel is how can you get grass to drop grass seed uh, this can, or your like crop seeds and stuff like that, this can actually be done through a procedure or a global trigger um, using a, a regular procedure. So if we click on the uh, when grass broken, I just called it that to make it a little bit easier. So what we're doing here is we're testing if a block is broken and in order to test uh, what we're going to be doing for like what block is broken we need to actually test for the block that we're breaking so I have a local variable up here this basically uh, makes it a random chance to drop the seeds so what I've done is I've set the local variable to random and then what I've done is made an, uh, an if statement with the condition that if local variable is greater than five, which is 50%, then it's going to test for two blocks. And that is um, if block at current location, the block that is being broken is um, grass, then it's going to um, execute the command or the event. It, or because this is an or statement, this means it can be either or of them. Um, this and statement means it's required for both. So, uh, or if it's a fern block. So if a fern block is broken, then it can drop the grass seed as well. Um, and this is just uh, offsetting the location to center block when it's being uh, spawning the gem. Uh, this needs to be your seeds. So with that, if we break the grass, it drops the seeds at a 50% chance. The next thing that we need to do is um, actually import all our uh, block models. Um, there is a vanilla block model that you can use uh, for the stages for crops if you want to. It's called uh, literally crop and um, I've just basically cloned that a number of times and called it stage 0, stage 1, stage 2, stage 3, stage 4, stage 5, stage 6, and stage 7. It's the same model, it's just uh, different um, stages for the thing. I've just textured it a little bit differently based on the block stages of the textures that we have here. So um, again, nothing too special, it's just the different stages. and. For textures we're going to need to import those as well so with that being said uh, you want to start with your lowest stage first so um, with this uh, we need to set our particle texture our, um, our model texture uh, we don't need rotation and then we need to set it to translucent and the main thing that you're gonna to have to do is make sure that your Y coordinate is 0.2 zero zero one now on your minimum y coordinate this basically allows it to be not flush with the block below uh, being the farmland if farmland has a flush block that is connected or touching the the actual hitbox of the farmland then it turns to dirt so setting it to 0 0.001 uh, this basically prevents that from happening um, the other thing that you want to do is adjust your height accordingly. Um, this is, I believe, one pixel high, so I basically set it to um, 0 0.062 because 0, 0 0.0625 is one pixel. So this is the nearest number for that, and that will work out fine. So when you have all that set up, uh, what you can do is uh, move on 
Uh, one thing that you need to do is make sure that your checkbox here is uh, enabled. I think it automatically enables when uh, you set your model, but just make sure it's checked. Um, I've named this just stage um, zero. I have it for the material plants. I don't have a creative inventory for this block because it's a crop block and the sound run step is planned. The hardness and resistance needs to be set to two. Uh, luminescence, uh, you can set that as much as you want. Uh, this will always be zero though, so um, you can't really adjust the transparency or light opacity. Um, it doesn't need gravity. It can be walk through. You need to enable that. Um, vanilla crops are replaceable, so you would want to check that as well. Um, no specific tool, and you want it for the creative item to um, basically um, give you the seeds itself. Uh, you want to disable the drop by sending the number to zero and not having a custom drop. Moving on, uh, you want the tick rate to be one. Uh, you want to set the map color to foliage and reaction to being pushed. You want to set this to destroy. All the other settings are fine. Uh, the last thing that you need to do uh, for all the major settings is the enable tile entity and inventory on this block. This will allow MBT tags uh, for variables and stuff. We're going to be using that in our procedure, so we need to make sure this is enabled. Uh, when you've done that, make sure you set this to zero and disable these two here. Uh, for the next thing, uh, we're going to look at the actual update tick. It's the most complex one that uh, is here, so uh, let's look at that. This is the same update tick uh, for all of the um, the blocks, so I'm going to just kind of briefly go over all this and hopefully not confuse you guys. So there is a main procedure uh, or main condition or if statement uh, testing for three things. Uh, I'll explain them in the order that they're testing for. So this one right here, uh, the first condition is if the block is not farmland. And if that's true, then, well, if the block is not farmland below the block. If that's true, then what it's doing is it's testing for if the current block at the location where it's being run from, so this is being run from our crop block itself, is one of our stages. So this is all the other stages here uh, from stage zero to stage six. So most of our stages, stage seven has its own, sta uh, own drop, so we had to configure that a little bit differently. So if that's true, then what we're doing is we're um, basically dropping the explosion. Um, we're, we're calling the procedure, so I need to explain that now. So explosion, um, one block destroyed by explosion. So basically this is just dropping uh, seeds at the current location. This is the low level one, so it's not that complex. Basically just dropping seeds. This is dropping more seeds based on and potentially the uh, the crop itself, depending on um, a procedure that uh, calculates the uh, amount of seeds and the item that's being dropped. So that's basically what's happening here. If that's true, then it's always going to remove the uh, the block after it's dropped the seeds and stuff. Um, if that if the farmland is underneath it still and it's fine, then what it's going to do is test for the next condition. Uh, this is basically going to test if um, any of these conditions are true. So we're using or statements here to continue uh, testing for multiple things. Uh, only one of them needs to be true. So one of the thing, the first thing that it's doing is testing if one of the sand blocks is above, one block above, um, and it will basically remove the block one block above and uh, with a drop. So this is all the procedures that will um, 
uh, all the conditions that will basically test for the block that's dropping and remove it with one with a block uh, or with a drop. So there's a whole anvils, pretty much any um, gravity gravity type block you're going to want to configure here. I've also added um, the um, concrete powder as well. So there's all those um, in the procedure here. If you want to remove them, then you can just take a chunk out like that and adjust it so it's um, say like that and then that would work fine uh, but make sure that you don't empty nodes like that or you'll run into some issues down here so with that being said um, we know how that all works uh, now what it's doing is um, the last condition down here is where the growth of the block happens um, now again we have a random growth uh, local variable up here so this is required to run the randomizer for testing what growth it needs to be done so make sure you have this uh, in imported before you or set up before you import the procedure itself. Uh, the first thing first condition that it's testing for is if the block or if the um, it's being run on the server side. Uh, server side means that it's the game running it, not the client. So it's more for multiplayer support. Uh, if a server is running this mod, then it's going to be putting the focus of all the um, updates and stuff on the server itself, not the player. So it's not testing for or basically running it on both of them, which helps uh, performance. Um, because it's a block uh, change, it needs to be on the world side, not the player side, so that's how that all works. Uh, we're also testing if the light level, uh, it, one block above, is equal to or greater than 7, or pardon me, uh, if it's greater than 7, so if it's anything above 7. Um, this could be point form as well. Um, if it is true, then it's going to um, enable the um, basically growth timer. This is an MBT um, timer that basically sets the variable, gets the variable, and then sets it 0.05 or I believe it's um, 1 it equals out to uh, 1 second like a real real time timer. So 0 or 20 divided by um, one divided by 20 or 20 divided, I don't know, one of the, the math operators, it comes out to 0 0.05, which is exactly um, what you need for one second. So one second, is, 20 ticks is a second, so I think it's like one divided by 20, and then that comes out with the number. Uh, for that, we're testing if the uh, next condition within that is if the growth timer is equal to or greater than our time that we want to um, basically check for an update. This will vary depending on the update itself. So I have it set to 20 seconds for it to grow. Uh, as you saw, it was pretty slow there. If you want to make it longer, increase this number. If you want to make it shorter, then decrease this number. There is a chance that it won't grow at all uh, within that 20 seconds, so you want to kind of um, adjust it not too far. I would say no more than 50 seconds and probably no more than uh, 10 or so. So, or 10 or 50. Uh, for the local growth, um, uh, variable we're setting this to a random number then in this what we're doing is we're testing for the current block uh, if the current block is one of our stages then we're testing if the random number is um, 0 0.66 which is a 33 percent chance and if that's true then we're removing the block and updating the block to um, our second second stage so if it's our second stage then what we're doing is um, moving on so it would go and skip this next stage here so it would go to this stage and then it has a chance to grow up double as well 
but uh, if that's not true, then it's testing if the number is equal to or greater than um, 33, or 0.33, which is an, another 33% um, chance. If that's true, then it's going to remove the block and update it to the next stage, which is this stage right here. So with that, if that's also not true, then there is a 0.34% chance that it won't update at all because there's only 66% uh, percent chance of it updating at all. So if that's true, if this is run, then what this is going to do is it's just going to reset the timer to zero. Our timer's right here, so this needs to be reset to zero each time. Um, it's doing this for every stage and our last, whoop, don't know where I went, there we go. Our last stage is basically our sixth, um, sixth block state. And what this is doing is it's basically um, just setting it to a 0.5% chance or 50% chance and it will remove the block at the current location and then uh, place our fully grown stage. So that's like the last particular one. So there's um, there's no other second block to basically test if for another update. So it's always going to be the, um, the last stage. So, and then again, it's setting the timer to zero. So that's the update tick. Um, it's a little bit more complicated than it looks than it looks. Uh, the only thing that you really need to configure is your block states and your um, there's any seeds that are in here. So anything that's your own block. So all these things are set up. There's also notes to let you know what stage you need to set it to. Uh, this one says stage one, this one says uh, stage two, this would be your stage zero. So all those have been added so you know which uh, block states to add. Um, I haven't added notes to these, I will add notes to these before I release this, so, and that as well. But um, for now, let's move on to the one block destroyed by player. So we're just dropping seeds at the center of the block, so it's very simple. And we have already covered the uh, when the explosion happens, so it's also dropping seeds, one seed at the current block in the center. So with that being said, uh, there is no world generation, so that's basically all there is for stage zero to stage six. So stage seven is basically a little bit different. Um, all the different heights for the blocks do alterate the uh, maximum Y coordinates. So this basically allows it to be a different height and match the height of the actual texture. So you want to configure this. One pixel is 0 0.0625. So it would be 0. Point, uh, or one is um, 16. So 16 of those numbers. So you wanna uh, do some math when you're working with your pixel height and stuff like that. You wanna measure the, the tallest part of your texture and then calculate how many pixels that you need um, this number to. So uh, in our case, this is a full 16 by 16 texture. So we wanna set this to one. Uh, again, all the same settings, uh, nothing really too spectacular. Everything needs to be set to one and all the other same settings we covered. And the only other difference, uh, it's still using the update tick, so the only difference with this is we're um, basically having it so it's uh, dropping a random number of seeds based on the, um, the item that the entity is currently holding. So we need a local variable for this. We're testing, uh, we're setting the local variable to a random number. Then what we're doing is we're always going to spawn our, um, our fruit, which is, you know, like if it was wheat, then it would be a wheat um, item. If it's, um, uh, say, a potato plant, then it would drop the potato. So this is always going to be dropping that item. Uh, then what we're testing for is if the um, 
our first condition, which is all connected in one long line. So what we're doing here is we're getting the item in current, or getting item in entity's main hand uh, for testing for the level of enchantment. And this should be set to fortune. If it's fortune equals three, then what it's going to do is um, basically uh, run a long list of random numbers to check for a percent. This is the same number uh, for what Minecraft uses for based on enchantment levels. So um, it's the local variable is equal to or greater than 9.65. I'm not sure what the percent of that is. I had to calculate all those and measure the percent from and put it into a number. So if that's true, then it's dropping uh, seeds, but this is a repeater, so it's dropping six seeds. So this number here is how many times this is going to be run. So this is gonna drop the seeds six times in the same spot um, repeatedly. And then it's going to do that every time the um, player breaks the block and then so on until it reaches the only one seed per drop. Um, if it's fortune 2 then what it's doing is um, only dropping up to five times uh, this is the same as vanilla if it's fortune 1 then it's only dropping up to four times and uh, always an extra or there's always a chance of it not dropping as well so and if it's uh, there's no fortune item, then what it's doing is it's going to um, basically only drop up to two times. Uh, that should be no, that should be three. Uh, so so this is basically going to drop up to three times, two times, or one time. And that's all that the um, player side of the um, when broken will basically uh, run as. So I'm going to save that, and for the when block destroyed by explosion, uh, because we're not testing for if the block or the player is um, basically has an, a fortune item, then what we're doing is we're uh, again having our local variable, we're testing we're setting it to a random number and then we're spawning the gem of our fruit block uh, or fruit item, which is like a weed item or whatever, a potato, whatever. And then what we're going to do is um, the same thing as our last um, section without the fortune. So we're testing if the random number is equal to whatever and, or equal to or greater than the number of percent. We're setting it to three, uh, well, it will basically have a three uh, spawn three if it's that number of the same seeds two if it's that one or one if it's that percent or none possibly if broken and that's all of the procedures uh, that basically runs that uh, the only other thing no, nope, that's everything. I covered everything. So, yeah, um, very straightforward forward stuff. Uh, we covered how to set up the seeds, how to set up the block states. Um, the only thing to note is the update tick is always being run for the same for all the block states. So, so the same update tick is here. So you don't need to make multiple update ticks. Just link that same one to the update tick and if it's from stage 6 to stage 0 then what you can do is link the um, growing um, crop procedures not the grown crop procedures so grown is basically for the seventh stage or the last stage where the growing are for the prior stages. So hopefully you guys found this uh, tutorial useful if you need any help uh, ask for help on my discord server i always make sure the discord server links in the description thanks for watching peace out